Malditov, what is it, how does it work, and why is it useful? Malditov is an acronym which stands for Matrix Assisted Laser Desorption Ionization Time of Flight, quite a mouthful. And this is a type of mass spectrometry, meaning that it measures the mass of the components within a sample. In general, all mass spectrometers consists of three major components. One, an ionization source, two, an analyzer, and three, a detector. In addition, they also have an inlet for sample loading and a computer for data analysis. Mass spectrometers are usually ionized by either electrospray ionization, ESI, which I will cover in another video, or matrix-assisted laser desorption, MALDI, which is of course what the MALDI-TOF uses. We'll come back to this MALDI part of the device in just a second. Regardless of the method for ionization, the point of that part is to ensure that the sample molecules become electrically charged. Then the mass analyzer separates them based on their mass to charge ratio or M to C ratio. In the case of Malditov, the sample gets separated based on the time it takes its constituent parts to fly through the time of flight or drift region of the detector. Since the sample has been ionized, it can be accelerated by a high voltage current and fly through the tube before it strikes the detector. The time needed for each molecule to reach the detector depends on its mass, meaning that smaller molecules will reach the detector faster than larger ones. This has to do with the fact that each particle is accelerated at the same electrical potential and the fact that kinetic energy is half the mass times the velocity squared. Since the kinetic energy and the electric potential energy equal each other, uh, the smaller the particle is, the faster it must go, otherwise they won't equal each other. The detector records the number of events within a specific time period and uses this information together with calibration standards to determine what the sample consists of. The pattern analysis performed is quite complex, reminding more of that used in artificial intelligence work rather than that we usually see in analyzers in the field of proteomics. Okay, so that's it for the time of flight part. Now let us return to the MALDI or matrix assisted laser desorption part of the device. The matrix acts as a sort of protective shield by absorbing the laser light and transferring it to the sample molecules. Direct exposure to the sample would ruin it because it would cause peptide fragmentation. The matrix and sample is mixed at a ratio of 1000 to 10,000 parts matrix to only one part sample. This mixture is then spotted onto a stainless steel and allowed to dry into crystals. Then, with the energy from the laser, the sample can desorb into a positively charged gaseous phase with very little accidental fragmentation. Let us now look closer at how the protein is actually identified. So, as we already established earlier, it is the TOF or time of flight part that is essential in deducing how big these constituent parts of the proteins actually are. And this is done by measuring the time it takes them to fly, which is again dependent on size. When these small ionized proteins hit the detector, it causes the detector to read out peaks based on how long it's taken them to fly there and then how many hits at the same time. So that's how we sort of analyze the data. To identify a protein based on its total molecular weight alone would be rather difficult to say the least. Therefore, the protein gets digested and we can analyze multiple smaller peaks instead of one big. This gives us multiple data points or clues that we can compare to existing data to identify the correct protein. To make this easier, consider a combination lock. Say you have the code 100, but this is rather easy for someone to crack on purpose manually. So instead you put on three smaller locks that add up to 100, but that one have to solve all of them simultaneously in order for the locks to actually open. So say you put the code 24, 65 and 11, these still sum up to 100, 
but the likelihood that you would put these three different numbers into the correct locks by accident is much smaller. In our case, it is similar. The more specific we can make the results from the Malditoff, the less likely we are to identify the wrong protein by accident. So you could have two proteins that have similar molecular weight, but their constituent parts are probably not going to have similar molecular weight. So it's going to be easier to distinguish one protein from the other protein based on how much these constituent parts weigh. Finally, why is the Malditoff useful? Well, as a mass spectrometer, it can be used whenever we are investigating the components that make up any molecule. Recently, there has also been a growing interest if the Malditoff could be used in identifying specific bacteria in routine healthcare checks as well. Some studies, such as the one by Seng P. et al. in 2009, suggested that it is a more time-efficient as well as cost-effective method compared to the ones currently used, and that it could potentially even replace gram staining and biochemical identification. So there you have it. That is Malditoff, and please, if you found today's video useful, share it with someone that you know could find it useful as well. And also, if you have any suggestion on future videos that you want me to do or topics you want me to cover, please leave it in the comments below. For this video, I have let the almighty YouTube algorithm decide what you can watch next. So let's see if it does a good job or not. You can see the video right on your screen now, so click on it if you like it or Maybe check out something else on my channel if you want to do that instead or just do whatever you want. <laughs> I'm happy you watched this and I hope you found it useful. Until next time.